Desperately Departing by Savage Chapter 2 Breaking Point Read by Alolo Wow, how can you possibly look worse than you did yesterday? The morning started out with Izuku waking up to an empty room and he allowed himself to slightly hope that maybe today wouldn't be as bad as yesterday. He was wrong. Hiroto snatched him away from breakfast and he and his friends dragged him out onto the side of the building near the trash cans. Once they got there, they threw him to the ground and laughed at Hiroto's comment. His roommate kneeled down to where Izuku was and grabbed his hair that was thankfully less tangled than he usually, usually was due to his conditioner that he used last night. Do you want to know something funny? I asked around, but... I asked around a lot and learned a very interesting fact about you. Oh no, 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 no. This can't be happening. He hasn't even in here been here for 24 hours yet and... Do you want to know, guys? He turned his head to his friends who are nodding their heads with sadistic smiles on their faces. I heard that little Midoriya here is quirkless. Izuku stopped, stopped breathing. He suspected that this what was he was talking about, but he prayed with every inch of his being that it was something else, anything else. Hirota yanked on his hair a bit and brought his head up. No wonder you didn't fight back last night. You can't. Laughter filled the alleyway, and Izuku knew what was coming. It was always like this. He could feel the sting of his tears swelling up in his eyes as he braced himself. This, of course, led to more laughter and taunts of how weak and pathetic he was. Deku, you're such a stupid crybaby. If you keep on crying, then I'll give you something to really cry about. The memories echoed in his head as tears spilled over and ran down his face. Izuku hated himself. He hated that he was so weak and he couldn't stop himself from crying in front of these bullies. He hated that he wasn't strong enough to fend them off or at least put up a fight. He hated that he had to be such a failure and that he couldn't even have the right anatomy to be quirkless. He had to be the 0000.1% that didn't have the toy joint and were still quirkless. He hated that mom wasn't here to pick him up and tell him that everything was going to be okay. The beating wasn't as bad as it usually was. The worst part was Hiroto's rock quirk. From what Izuku saw, he could turn his body into rock and even sh- and shape it into weapons. The moment, At the moment, he was just using big rock hands to pummel people, but it wouldn't be surprising to see the quirk grow to be used other than that. None of the other guys helped too much with the beating. They just sat back and watched and encouraged Hiroto. By the end of it, Izuku was left crumpled on the ground and feeling like he got run over by a bus and then run over again by another bus. He could already feel the bruises and knew that almost his entire chest and back would be covered in black and blue. At least he had the decency not to hit the places that were easily seen. He would only have a couple bruises on his arms, legs, neck, and face. He probably had a black eye, but it wasn't the worst thing that he's ever had, and at least nothing was broken that he could tell. The limp or the walk or limp to school was longer than Izuku was used to. His mom's apartment was only about a six minute walk away from his middle school, whereas where he was now was at least twenty minute was at least a twenty minute one and not being able to walk correctly certainly didn't help. He was thankful, sorta, that he was able to stay at school until he graduated. It would have been a nightmare to transfer and have to deal with being the new kid only a couple months from the end of the year. The bell rang just as Izuku walked through the entrance and ha- he had to rush to s- change his shoes and make his way up to where his classroom was on the third floor. He tripped halfway up the staircase and had to bite his tongue to stop from crying out due to landing on 
one of the really bad bruises on his legs. Once he finally got to class, his teacher was almost done with attendance and he tried his best to sneak to his seat without being noticed, but his classmates had other ideas. Hey look, Decker is late! What a loser, can't even make it to class on time. <laughs> Useless. Midoriya! The teacher's voice rang out above the sneakering and his class of his classmates and Izuku winced at their tone. Being late to class is unacceptable. You know this. His chest tightened and he could feel the growing pressure of his anxiety creep up. Y yes, I, I know. I just... You see, what happened was... I don't want your excuses. You will stay after school for detention and maybe then you'll learn some time management skills. I... <laughs> Zuku wanted to defend himself and explain that he had... Mood that he had moved and so his morning had been a little hectic but he knew that they wouldn't listen it was always like this he was just too big of a screw up for them to overlook his mistakes like they did the other kids they all have potential to be heroes and are paths to greatness and are on paths to greatness and izuku wasn't it's not like he deserves pity or exceptions anyway he should have done he should have done better this morning sure he couldn't have known that he was going to get jumped by those boys but he could have walked fast or not tripped on the stairs if he weren't so useless and pathetic then he wouldn't have these problems it sucks to be quirkless stupid little deku has to stay for detention because he can't do anything right is that surprising to anyone? I don't think so. Kachan's voice wasn't as quiet as he probably meant it to be, and he and his lackeys laughed as they passed Izuku's desk. Try not to be any more of an idiot than you already are. The teachers doesn't need you bothering them. He was right, of course. The teacher had to stay after class to keep him in detention. That was just more of the day that he was taking up because he was so stupid. Stupid, dumb, useless, burden, Deku, nice going. You were late and now you're an inconvenience to the teacher. I really am sorry. It was just him and the teacher in the classroom now. He was supposed to finish the stack of extra work that he was given before he could leave and he was trying his best to get through the pile. But he must have been stupider than he thought, because it was taking him forever. The teacher sighed at their desk, and they were reading some book that Izuku didn't know. I don't need nor want your apologies, Midoriya. Just hurry up with that work. Of course, sorry. Izuku winced and caught sight of the teacher rolling their eyes at their desk. He needed to stop doing that, but he can't help it. Stupid. Just to get your work done and leave. Thirty minutes later, and all the extra work on his desk was completed, and he turned it in, and he was on his way to his locker so that he could change his shoes and head home. Mom was probably going to ask why he was late, and... Oh. Guess I don't have to worry about that anymore. Izuku's mood plummeted. Dark thoughts and feelings encased him as he slowly walked out of the entrance and down the gate so that he didn't know and so he didn't notice the movement next to him until he was grabbed and dragged away by multiple hands holding him and covering his mouth so that he wouldn't scream it didn't take him long to recognize the hands and the voices of his classmates they weren't the ones that all they were the ones that always followed Karchin around and joined in on picking on him <clears throat> He prayed that today's beating wouldn't be a bad one. All he really wanted to do was crawl into a hole and cry. But he knew that if he started crying now, they would just hit him harder. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So he would just have to be strong and hold out. Guys, maybe today isn't the day. Didn't you hear about- Shut up! No one cares. Deku was late to class and he had to stay behind for detention like an idiot and he needs to be taught a lesson. The other guys 
grunted in agreement as they continued to carry him to wherever they were going. They had two people holding his arms and legs and then some around to make sure that he couldn't escape. They talked as they walked, mostly about normal school stuff. Some talked about Kachan and how he was applying to the UA Hero course and how they thought that he was going to make it in no question. Suzuku agreed with them. If anyone was going to make it as a hero out of this school, it was Kachan. For one, his quirk was incredibly strong and perfect for being a hero. But only, but not only was his quirk strong, but he was just strong himself. He always got what he wanted and had people following him and sucking up to him because they knew that he was just that great. He was the best at everything and worked his hardest to stay that way. Not like Izuku, he couldn't do anything right. No quirk, no strength, no backbone, no mom. Izuku could never be like that. The group stopped ta- walking and adjusted their hold on him. Hey Bakugo, we brought him. Good. Izuku knew that voice anywhere. The voice of his childhood best friend. Of the person who always looked up he always looked up to and strived to be like. Izuku was dropped onto the ground without warning and ended up hitting the back of his head on the concrete on the ground, which sent spots across his vision for a moment. He wanted to rub the back of his head and he wanted to get off his tailbone that was most certainly bruised now, but he knew better. He didn't want to bring any more pain to himself than what was necessary. Get up, Deku. You look like a slug laying on the ground like that. Kachan's voice (laughs) demanded with a hint of a smile. Izuku obeyed and gingerly stood up and saw that he was in an alleyway surrounded by Kachan and his lackeys. He tried not to make eye contact with any of them and kept his head down as he prepared himself for what was going to happen. This sent laughter through the group and someone behind him commented, It's almost too easy. He's getting to be no fun. That didn't sound very good to Izuku. Kachan scoffed and walked closer to where he stood. You're so pathetic. Makes me wonder if it's even worth it to teach you these lessons. Uh, I'm sorry. The sound rather uh, the sound rattled through the alleyway. A warning ex- explosion. Shut your mouth. Another guy off to the side sighed like he was bored. Come on, Bakugo. If you're going to rough him up, just do it already. Kachan turned around slowly and glared at the guy who made a comment causing him to straighten and take a step back. Don't tell me what to do. He growled and turned back to Izuku. He's right, though. Wouldn't want to make you too late getting home. Auntie Inka would have a heart attack. Bakugo! The unsure guy before snapped. What? You can't just say that. Kachan's expression turned slightly confused as he turned as he looked at the guy whose eyes seemed to be two sizes larger than they were before and he kept on darting his gaze back and forth between Izuku and him. What's wrong with you? You think you can correct me and tell me what to do? Sparks started firing from his hands as he took a step towards the guy. Want me to teach you a lesson too? The guy shook his head and lowered his eyes. That's what I thought. Izuku is sure that he probably said some more things after that, but his thoughts began to roll in on each other like waves. Thoughts of his mother and how he was never going to get home and have her worry over where he had been. He would never feel her too tight embrace or hear her quiet singing as he cooked and cleaned. At some point, the fist collided with with his face and joined him back to reality as he stumbled into one of the alley walls. Listen to me when I'm talking, Deku. What? I'm I'm sorry. What were you saying? That just made Kachan's temper rise more. He reached out and hit him again, but Izuku's instinct kicked in, and he tried to dodge the blow, but ended up running into one of the guys beside him who shoved him away right into Kachan's exploding fists. <sighs> he crumpled to the ground like a 
with a hand holding the side of his face where the pu explosive punch landed. His ears was left ringing, and he could feel some tears roll down his cheeks defiantly. Ha! That was pathetic. Don't you... And you think you can be a hero? You can't even dodge a punch without screwing up. There's no way you could ever help anyone. The words flowed through his right ear, the only one he could currently hear out of, and around and around in his head. Pathetic. There's no way you could ever help anyone. Useless Deku, you'll never be a hero. Each hit was intentional. That was for ignoring us, and that was for being an idiot, and that's for getting detention. Kick after kick, punch after punch. And that's for the stunt you pulled the other day. How dare you try and save me from some weak villain that even you wouldn't be able to take down. It was pathetic and insulting. Bakugo hit him harder with another quick punch to the side of his head with a fresh wave of rimming, ringing ears watch over Izuku. Useless, 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 Deku, idiot, coward, worthless, waste of space, pathetic, weak. Izuku's chest tightened painfully to the point where he had to physically grab it with a hand that wasn't holding his ringing ears. The words stung as they swirled and grew. He had heard it a hundred times before, so why was it taking root now? Why was it getting to him so much now. I think I can do anything that you put your mind to, baby. Oh, Izuku, you're kind and intelligent and strong and you care about people. That's what really matters. Not about having a powerful quirk, but what's in your heart. I believe in you. That was what was different. Mom had always been his anchor, his lifeline. Now she was gone and she was never coming back. Look at him, not even attempting to fight back. Laughter sounded around him, and Kachan began to walk away, followed by everyone else. They walked up to him and patted him on the back, and even gave him a high five for his beat town, saying how just how cool he was. They were all exiting the alley's mouth when Kachan stopped and turned his head to look back at Izuku. You're nothing, and always will be. Why don't you just do us all a favor and take a swan dive so we don't have to deal with your shit anymore? And that, and with that, they were gone, and Zuko was left on the ground. Warm tears streamed down his face, but he was numb, feeling no th nothing, no pain. It all just stopped, and he knew what he was going to do. He had made his decision.